Still Smart System version 8.0 offers the capability of designing typical punch window and door openings for both load bearing and curtain walls. In this tutorial, we will explain the design and output details for an example window opening in a simply supported curtain wall. To begin, from the home screen, we'll open the curtain wall design module and choose the simply supported wall window opening template. Other options available include spandrel walls and openings, single span with parapet, double span with parapet, or a user-defined set of spans for wall and opening design. The template opens with various design input parameters that need to be set. We can assign the criteria and set up window geometry and set model data in any order. Keeping the name as window one, in this example, we'll start by setting the span height, stud spacing, and the opening dimensions. The dimensions for the opening width, opening height, and sill height can be set by typing the values into the appropriate fields. Next, we'll enter the design parameters starting with the design code input. You will notice there are options for the International Building Code and the Canadian National Building Code. Previous versions of the codes can be selected. For this example, the 2012 IBC is selected. ASD and LRFD design methods are available for use with the IBC while the LSD method is available when selecting a Canadian design code. We'll select ASD as the design method and utilize the default strength and deflection factors for the combinations that include dead and wind loads. The IBC code does allow the wind load deflection factor to be multiplied by 0.7. However, we will stick with the default values for the example. Next are the options to design for web crippling. Depending on connection types or locations of concentrated loads and reactions, the web crippling check may be needed. Options for considering standard punch outs or web holes and the strength increase of cold work of forming are available. In this example, we will not consider standard punch out or web holes. Next, we can enter the member data for the window. To begin with member input, we have the option to design the member based on the inputs or select check safety to analyze a specific member and bracing configuration. In this example, we will specify specific members and perform a safety check. The stud depth and member types are selected for the jam B, header, and sill. Steel Smart System can design standard studs and TSN jam studs with multiple configurations available for each type. Next, we select the member layout for jam B. There are options for one piece or built up pieces attached back to back or toe to toe. If a two piece option is selected, the fastener spacing to connect them can be specified, allowing Steel Smart System to design the built jam B with this consideration. Lastly, make all the configuration selections for the jam B, header, and sill from drop down list and assign the specific stud and track selections.
Down the left side, we can move into the bracing inputs. We'll close the design and member data section to clean up our workspace. Then start by adding the maximum wall bridging spacing as a reference for the jam Bs. The lateral and torsional bracing spacings for the jam B can be set to none, full, or the bridging spacing. There are also options to set predetermined spacings or to type a spacing into the input. The header and sill bracing values would then be set. Lastly, set the distortional buckling rotational stiffness value. Usually if this value is unknown, it should be set to zero. Next, under deflection requirements, lateral deflection limits, vertical deflection limit for header, and the absolute lateral deflection can be set. The typical values for various finish types are available for selection. An absolute deflection limit for lateral deflection can also be specified. For the example, we will use a horizontal and vertical ratio of L over 360 and an absolute deflection limit of 0.5 inches. Following the deflection inputs are the loads. Choose a window type slash lateral load distribution type. We have options between four-way distribution, two-way distribution to the header and sill, or two-way distribution to the jam Bs for glazed openings. There is also an option to choose an unglazed opening where Steel Smart System will design for the wind loads tributary to the cripple studs only. We will choose the four-way distribution to a glazed opening and insert an ultimate wind load of 63 pounds per square foot. If any dead loads is required to be supported by the header, there is an option to insert a distributed load. Next, after loads, we can move the Connections tab to view and select connection criteria for each connection location. For the various locations, we can choose a connection type, a clip category, and the actual clip and fastener data for design. For this opening example, we'll set the base connection as a moment resisting stiff clip CL. The attachment to structure categories can be set. It should be noted that for connections to concrete, the design should verify the design output and connection criteria and strength. The span one sill and header connections are set to be the span one sill and header connections are set to be the stiff clip AL while the head connection is set as a vertical connection with the vertical clip SLB. Now we can solve and design the opening by pressing the run button. The design summary will appear showing the design ratios for each component. We can easily see which members or connections meets the capacity and serviceability requirements of the design. In this case, Steel Smart System returns a not safe status for members capacity. Down the left side, we can review the member output, connections output, and reactions. Moving to the member output, we can determine which member is unsafe. Checking through the tabs, the sill is unsafe. By blocking the input and returning to the member selection, we can increase the sill section size to meet the design requirements.
After rerunning the system, we can see that all components meet the requirements. Now the member results can be subsequently reviewed. After reviewing the members, the connections can be reviewed. The Connections Output tab allows the designer to review the clip design and fastener forces. The actual and allowable forces are given for the clips as well as for the screws used for Jam B base, Jam B head, sill, and header connections. Each connection can be reviewed by cycling through the connection tabs at the top. Again, a reminder that the designer will need to verify the connections to concrete according to the requirements of the ACI design code for anchorage into concrete. Next, we can review the factored and unfactored reactions on each joint in the design. The unfactored reactions for each load case can be selected from the pull-down menus. The designer is able to view the axial, moment, shear, and deformation diagrams for each load type or load combination. These can be viewed in the opening framing model off to the right in the main window by pulling the desired graphic from the drop-down menus. Finally, we can review and export input and output data in the report module. SteelSmart System 8.0 now allows the user to show and hide different sections of the report using checkboxes. Once the pertinent sections are inserted into the report, the user can go through the steps to print report as PDF or also save report. If any further design changes are required, we can return to the input data, unlock the inputs, and make the changes. To resolve, we just change the inputs and solve the system again. Once a satisfactory design is produced, the design is complete. This now concludes the SteelSmart System 8.0 opening design tutorial.
For more of the latest information and tutorials for Steel Smart System version 8.0, please visit www.steelsmartsystem.com.